Hi everyone, welcome to Craft Crazy Keith. This is my first video on this channel and I really hope that you enjoy it. In today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about myself, what the format of this channel will be, and um, maybe do a little studio tour. And studio is in quotes, by the way. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna do a segment on what I'm working on, which I call Keith's Crafting Corner. So let's get started. Okay, about me. So I'm 61. Um, I was born and bred in New Jersey in a little town called Cranford and moved around since then. I lived in New York City after I graduated college. I then met my um, husband, David. Um, at the time he wasn't my husband, but I met my husband, David. He moved in with me in Manhattan. And then from there we moved to Brooklyn from Brooklyn, we then moved to San Francisco. From San Francisco, we moved to Oakland. From Oakland, we moved to Seattle, where I am right now, and been in Seattle for 13 years. So I mentioned David, he's my husband. I also have, or we also have a, a Boston Terrier, Weezer, and a canary called Tori. And Tori is not after Tori Amos. <laughs> It's actually, his name is Tori, which is Japanese for bird. And I thought, oh, bird would have been boring, but Tori is great. Plus I love the Tori names, but he's a boy. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, and what do I do um, for a living at least? I'm a, I've been in the design, software design world for, I don't know, it's practically going on 27, maybe rounding the corner to 30 years. Um, I d am mostly a manager strategist pr for product design from a design perspective, if that makes any sense. So that's me. Okay, so why did I decide to do this channel? Well, some of it has been from people encouraging me to do it. I love crafting. I've, I would say I've been doing crafting since I was a little kid in some form or another, um, but it wasn't until my adulthood that I got really into it. I remember back when my great grandmother was knitting, watching her knitting and was fascinated by it. I always heard her sort of counting in the background. One, two, two. And then looking at her stitches and Something that I really wanted to be able to do. Um, and I tried it when I was in college and failed miserably. I tried to make a sweater and ugh, it was frustrating. But then I, um, I guess back to around, let's see, when was it? 2000? And I saw some, some folks knitting in the lobby of the place where I was working, I said to myself, and I think this is about the time that the knitting craze really started getting hot. I said, I'm gonna learn this. And I went to the local store in Oakland at the time, Article Pract, was such a great place, um, but it eventually closed. But boy, I love that place. I kind of wound up living there a lot, <laughs> really going there a lot. Um, but I went to Article Pract, picked up some wooden um, single point needles and or straight needles and just there wasn't a lot online um, there was a what was it called knitting I think it was called knittinghelp.com was where I learned a lot and from books and so I basically self-taught myself how to knit and then from there I just went crazy I started to I wanted to learn how to spin yarn and um, from scratch, like from the fleece to combing it and stuff like that. I really want to understand the fiber behind the yarn, honestly. And it talks a lot, it, it speaks a lot about me. I'm, I like to know the ins and outs. I'm kind of like a technical crafter. I like to know why and how and what are the best methods or maybe what are the different ways to do things. 
So that just, I got crazy. I started reading lots of books on fiber and boy. And then from there, let's say, I think when I first moved to Seattle, um, probably a couple years in, I decided to learn weaving. So I bought a rigid head of loom, which I'll show you a little bit later in my tour of my studio. And then from there, I um, just started going crazy. It was just mostly during the pandemic, wanting to learn a bunch of different crafts. So I thought, hey, why not? And I'm super passionate about it. So I thought, why not do this channel and sort of share my passion, tell you what I'm learning, maybe some of the frustrations. Um, I do lots of, I would say, I'm obsessed. Obsessed is a big part of me, obsession but I'm obsessed around researching products, um, whether that's products to do my crafting or it's places to learn my crafting so I could share sort of my journey there and um, maybe do some reviews of that. And then, um, yeah, so I figured, why not? I started to, actually, I did a video or two when I was learning EPP, English Paper Piecing, and when after I got a Cricut machine around how to use the Cricut to do the cutting of the papers. And I posted some videos of those um, in a Facebook page and people said, oh, you should do more of these. So I figured, why not? So I figured I'd give it a try and see what the response is. So that's why I started Keith's sort of craft crazy Keith. Um, I always want to call it craft Keith crazy craft, but it's, Really crap crazy key, so I need to get used to this new name. So that's me. Oh, and this will be raw. As you can see, I'm not gonna edit this probably not gonna edit this part out. Um, I figured, yeah, I wanna learn also about how to create a YouTube channel, and nothing about it, how to do video editing. So I'll probably share some other things along the way besides just the crafting, sort of the learning process. All right, so on to the next segment. Welcome to my quote unquote studio. This is pretty much it. It's definitely a work in progress, that's for sure. But this is where I do some of my crafting. There is also downstairs, but this is where m most of my supplies are. And eventually this will become my crafting studio. Uh, Let's see, and so we'll do a little product tour too. So over here, is my Juki sewing machine. It's the HZL F600. And yeah, it's on the floor because I don't have a sewing table, but that I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, but I bought that uh, sewing machine back in, let's see, the summertime, this past summer, because I really wanted to learn how to sew, but also to do quilting making piecing, piecing pieces together and, and doing the actual quilting. I wanted to try doing free motion quilting and all this other stuff. So I thought I'd buy myself a sewing machine and I actually didn't use it until this past weekend. I've been afraid of it. Um, I thought maybe I would take an in sort of person class, but with the pandemic, couldn't find one. So I finally said, I'm gonna get over this fear of the machine, mostly around threading it, and I just didn't want to break it. Um, and did that this past weekend, and it wasn't so bad. It took me a little bit to get the stitches, uh, to get it threaded right, but then I finally got it, and it was so much fun. What a great machine. So maybe I'll do a semi-product review of that later, because I did lots of research on that. And then over here, some storage. Um, I got m some of my weaving supplies, but I'm probably like a lot of you, this is just a peek at my sort of supplies and stash. I got stuff under here, because I have no room, and then I got stuff that's under probably every bed and in every closet, again, probably like a lot of you. My fiber, uh, sort of yarn and um, uh, fiber to be spun is up there in, closet in the loft and boy just I got stuff everywhere and over here is my newish Cricut machine that's fun and I initially bought this to do the paper piecing um, 
cutting the, the paper out for the English paper piecing and then decided, well, I'm gonna do our holiday cards with this. So I learned how to really pretty much from scratch how to do, um, how to use a Cricut to make a holiday card. And then this is my shacked flip 20 inch um, rigid heddle loom and my Lendrum spinning wheel. Oh. And I forgot to say, I decided to name my sewing machine Hazel. I loved Hazel when I was a kid. I reruns, I'm um, 61, but I wasn't around for the first runs of Hazel, but I loved that show. Um, and this is HZL, and I always like in my head, I keep calling it Hazel, calling her Hazel anyway, so that's her official name now, Hazel. This project is called Wallflowers, and it's a blanket crocheted, uh, designed by a very talented designer called Sue Matin, and she goes by The Mercery. She's located in the UK. Uh, the yarn in this project is Rowan Felt Tweed, and there are 16 colors. So this course was done online, uh, which was great because Sue before the pandemic was only doing her courses in person, which meant no one outside the UK or probably in her neck of the woods would be able to take this because she doesn't just offer the pattern. Her courses are talk about color theory and process and just sometimes philosophical things around doing big projects and commitment and it's it's great. To me, this course was almost like taking a course in college. Very different than just, here's a pattern, pick your colors and follow along. And how much did the granny square, the first one I did with her, I'll probably do a special segment on that just in another video, which was also lots of fun. So at the end of this, I, um, and while I still have a lot to do, I would say I, really developed a love for crochet. I have lots of projects that I have in my queue to sort of working on. I've completely changed my point of view of crochet, especially this, because to me it's like a work of art um, and something that I'm, I can't wait to finish, even if it takes me another few months, because it's just been unbelievable watching this grow. So that's this project. Okay, this project is called Drop Cloth Sampler, and it's designed by a woman named Rebecca Rinquist, and she has a company called Drop Cloth. And her samplers are really great. They're, they're fun, sketchy, and for a beginner, and even if you're not a beginner, I just like this approach rather than sort of the very traditional embroidery projects that you see out there like flowers and plants and stuff like that. And for a first project in embroidery, I thought, why not? It just looks like fun. So I bought this about a year ago and I finally pulled it out of my projects waiting to be done pile and started working on the different stitches. It's been fun. It's been an interesting process for sure. I'm using some yarn here from other projects right over here. Um, but it's mostly using DMC threads. Um, let's see, what else can I say? Oh, and Rebecca's on Etsy, and I'll put that information below. Um, as I was sort of researching, because I told you earlier, I believe, that I researched like crazy, I was looking at different scissors, and I saw this pair of scissors in a local store called Luca. And you can see these all over the place, but God, they're so beautiful. Um, and I started, I, I think the first time I, I saw these, I was like, oh, I can't I can't justify buying these because they're kind of expensive. I think you, know, you can see similar scissors like this online that are cheaper, but these are definitely high quality. You can kind of, oops there, it's zooming in, see, focusing in, it, it, it's, it's great. Um, and this is, these were made by a company called uh, Studio Carta, but I bought it in Luca. Um, I even researched the case. The case didn't come with it, but I wanted to find a case that it would fit, so I went crazy looking for um, cases on Amazon. And then these are the, the needles that I use. These are um, embroidery needles, and um, Rebecca talks about pre-threading needles with 
different colors of uh, thread and I wound up doing that using most of these even though they're different needle sizes. It was definitely good to have a bunch of threaded needles. And this is sort of my current stash of DNC thread. And I even researched what's the best kind of box to hold all these threads in because I wanted to organize them. And this one came with a little winder so you could use, kind of attach it to the side of the box and then wind up your skeins of thread onto these cards and then label them. Um, and then this is the embroidery hoop that I used. And I added, because I read that the tension is better if you use um, bias tape. I'm not focusing there. Focus, focus. Doesn't want to focus. Um, bias tape around the inside hoop. So I tried that. So this has been fun. Um, I think the biggest lesson I learned, which I had forgotten, was you know, French knots really weren't that hard, but they'd be a lot easier if you used a milliner's needle or straw needle um, because I struggled pulling the needle through the knot um, and didn't realize I was using the wrong needle at the time, even though I had read and saw lots of videos on how to do French knots. So I'll definitely use a bit, uh, that needle when I do these Boolean knots. Um, one other thing I would tell you is that I, for months, maybe not full time, but definitely watched a lot of videos on how to do these different embroidery stitches. And I think the best place that I, I found as the most useful is Sarah Humphrey. Uh, she's in the UK and I'll put a link to her uh, YouTube channel. It's great. She explains things really well. And in fact, you'll see here, these little stitches are um, where you end the stitches so that you have sort of a neater back. Um, Rebecca Rinquist um, goes for, you know, she, she likes to have things, she doesn't care if it's messy in the back. And I honestly don't care, but I started seeing these knots. They started getting in the way. So this is me trying first, you know, her approach. Um, and then I started doing it the way Sarah shows how to start and end a thread. And I definitely like that better. These big knots kind of, kind of get in the way. So I think that's a style of um, starting and ending that I'm gonna use when I continue to practice and learn more about embroidery. Thanks for joining Craft Crazy Key today. I really hope you enjoyed the video and the content that I shared with you. Please leave comments below so I know how to change if I need to or do anything differently, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, and I look forward to the next video. I, I think the next video I'm gonna do an unboxing, I've never done an unboxing. And that, that unboxing is gonna be of a product called the Crafter's Box. Um, it's part of my learning, crafting learning and my making learning. One of the things I've been really obsessed about is are all the different channels that are out there around, you know, how to learn this or that. It's, uh, it's not just fiber, fiber making, it's sewing. I bought a sewing machine, so how do I learn sewing? So I found this uh, product, or I would say service called the Crafter's Box, and uh, they have a subscription, and I thought I'll give it a try. And my box, I think, is arriving today. I can't wait to see it. And it's about making broom making. And the first, the project is making a, a whisk broom. How fun is that? So I think I'll do an, an unboxing and a review of that on my next, in my next video. And then probably do a Keith's Crafting Corner and see what happens between now and then. Maybe there'll be some other content that I'll share with you. So thanks again. And I'll leave you with this motto. This is something that I always think about. You never stop learning. And that's really one of my biggest beliefs. So we'll call it my sort of motto. Craft Crazy Keith, where you never stop learning. Thanks so much.